Hi, this is Munson with Munson Music, and we're going to talk about how you can play along with a song called Word Crimes by Weird Al Yankovic. And it starts off with this cool little bass line, and, and kind of working off the blurred lines, and actually it's, it's kind of like blurred lines if you want to go check out that lesson too, that's cool. Um, but we start on the third fret on the low E string, as kind of this cool little bass part, kind of working a G note. G, 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 and then we go to a D note, so we got open D, and more D, and more D. And more D. And then we go to third on the A, second on the A, open A. It's kind of a little cool little bass walk down. Kind of like B, C, B, A, or open three, two, O, to lead us back to our third fret on the low E string for, for kind of that G and kind of repeating that bass line. Now, another option is to play off some octave shapes, which can be very, very cool and very disco, where you could do third fret on the low E string is kind of the third fret G note that we were playing. But then adding in the third finger on the D string, fifth fret. And kind of alternating between those G notes could be a cool idea. So I'm going three to five, kind of skipping a string. Very similar to your power chord shape, but now we're going G to G instead of G to D. Um, and then from there, we can do the D idea from the A string, fifth fret, to the G string, seventh fret. Kind of working those for the D notes. Might be kind of a cool idea. And then from there, on that walk down, we could go down to the third fret on the A for the C note, add in the G string on the fifth fret. So it's taking the shape and just moving it around, C to C. Then we slide it down one more fret for a B to a B, kind of take the second fret and the fourth fret on, on the G string. And then open A, the second on the, on the G string would be kind of another A note. So you kind of G, 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 G. So you may want to kind of play around with those. I was kind of digging on the octave shapes through the C note. And then kind of your D, C, B, A, kind of walk down. Now if you wanted to just back it up with chords too, that would be cool, and you could start on a G major chord. And the way you play G major, first finger goes to A on the second fret, second finger on the low E string, third fret, and third finger on the high E string, third fret, and if you strum all those together, that sounds a G major chord, and it sounds really happy. Now you may also dig on putting the third finger on the B, third pinky on the high E third. And actually, since we're only dealing with two chords, there's a couple other options. You can use just a G5 power chord by doing first finger on the low E third, third finger on the A string fifth. And kind of work it that way. Or if you're working on bars, it can be kind of cool to do this as a third fret bar. Second finger on the G, fourth fret, third finger on the A, fifth fret, pinky on the D, fifth fret. Kind of a G major idea. Or if you want to jazz it up a little bit more, it can be kind of cool to do a G major 7 by doing first finger on the low E 3rd, second on the B 3rd, third finger on the D 4th, pinky on the G 4th. Kind of working that as a G major thing, just playing against the tune a little bit, but that can be cool. Or if you want to make it really big and nasty and cool and happy, um, you can do first finger on the low E 3rd, second finger on the D 4th, third finger on the G 4th, pinky over the E and the B on the 5th fret. And make it a G major 13, which can be a very, very hip sound for you too. So anyway, a lot of different options there, but, but for the most part, G major works. And then from the G major, we go to a D major chord. I normally do this first finger on the G second, second finger on the high E second, third finger on the B third, and if you strum the D string to the high E string, you have a beautiful sound to D major. Now you may also dig on lifting off the second finger for D suspended second, it's always a dangerous finger to lift. Or you could add in the pinky on the high E third for the suspended chord, kind of save some things around the D chord. Or if you're working on bars, it can be kind of cool to do this as a fifth fret bar, third finger over the D, G, and B string. You can kind of work that for your D major. Or you could even make it kind of a D7 kind of an idea by doing bar on fifth, third finger on the D7, pinky on the B string on the seven. You're not working that. Actually, D7, you can even do that in by doing first finger on the B first fret, second finger on the G second, third finger on the high E second, or around D7. So it can be cool to lift the third for D7 sus2, or you could add in the pinky on the high E on the fourth for D7 sus, and kind of say some things around that chord. Or another jazzy cool voicing could be a D9, which you could play doing first finger on the D fourth fret, second finger on the A fifth fret, third finger over the G, B, and E. strumming options you could kind of use through the tune actually. You could just do kind of a down count, kind of a G, two, three, four, 
Too, even with just the downs, can be cool to just try and switch between them. And then another strum pattern, one of my favorite strum patterns though for a 4 4 like this is down, down, up, up, down, up. So we took the G and just tried that a lot. You'd have down, down, up, down, G, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. And we do that four times, and then we go to our D chord. Try those other voicings. <laughs> about the song and I'm really excited about the song um, you can use something called a 16th note strum pattern and what I mean by that is if you're tapping your foot in a beat right now we're dividing that beat into two parts with our down down up up down up kind of like one two one two and that's called an eighth note what a 16th note is is where you divide that into four parts one two three four one two three four and one of my favorite 16th note strum patterns is a long down 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 up up down down up down what I mean by that is if you take the G and do it down for four. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. That's what you'd be doing on the first beat. Then on the second beat, you do it down on one, down on three, up on four. So we're going one, two, three, four, down, 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 down. And then on the third beat, you do it up on two, down on three. So we're going one, two, three, four, one, up, down, one, up, down, one, up, down. And then on the last beat, you go down, up, down, up, right along with the one, two, three, four. So down, 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 down. So all together, you got G, down, down, up, down, 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 Something else that I like to add to a song like this too is bass notes in it. And our main idea actually kind of works around those bass notes, kind of that, that G idea. And so on the G, normally you have the low E string for that bass note. So you could work a bass down, up, up, down, up, or a bass up, down, up, up, down. It's kind of an idea. And then when you get to the D, you have the D for your bass. D bass up, down, up, up, down, bass up, down, up, down, bass. And then you might want to throw in that bass line. D, three, two. Do that around the D chord. It's kind of a D lick. Or you can almost kind of throw in a little piece of the strum with that too. Kind of a bass up, bass up, bass up, bass up. Might be kind of cool. So on the D. an open D and kind of doing a hammer on the second fret and then a pull off right after it. I think it's Marshall Tucker Lee, but, but anyway.
dig on the 16th, you could add basses to that and make it a bass. Down, down, up, up, down, down, up, down, or a bass, bass, down, down, up, up, down, down, up, down, or a bass, bass, down, down, up, up, bass, down, up, down. Oh, wow. And I'm really doing a lot of stuff actually with just those four notes actually the A string open, second on the A, open D, second on the D. Actually, working hammer ons can be cool, cool offs. So, so you could kind of play around with those notes in between too. For E minor would be open E to second or third fret for the G. Open to second on the A, open second on the D, open second on the G, open to third on the B, and then open to third on the high E string. So if you wanted to throw in more B kind of an idea, that could be a very cool scale to play around with too. would kind of be working third to fifth, second to fifth on the A, second to fifth on the D, second to fourth on the G, third to fifth on the B string, third to fifth on the high string. So you may want to kind of play around with, with those notes too. I'm, I'm working an E minor pentatonic scale over our progression, which is a G is our one chord, D is our five chord randomly. So we're kind of going to one to five through the whole tune. So kind of thinking G major pentatonic slash E minor pentatonic scale licks. Or hammer ons combination slides, bends. You know, kind of an idea could be cool to throw in too, kind of working the chord. crazy way to cover this tune. Cry, it's about weird how Yankovic. So good luck. <laughs>